Okay, good morning everyone. So it's my pleasure and my privilege to introduce today's uh, speaker of the Manuel Cardona series of uh, lectures. Actually today is the first uh, Spanish speaker, so that's uh, an honor. And it's also the first chemist, which is also an honor for, for the <laughs> institute. Uh, we have had uh, fi uh, four uh, physicists before, but today is the first chemist, and I think uh, this should be promoted. We should bring also biologists, but he's also going to talk a bit about biology, so uh, that's a good introduction. So um, our speaker today, Nathaniel Martin, he's a professor at the Complutense University in Madrid. He's also the vice uh, director of uh, one of the institutes of nanoscience that was created more or less at the same time as ICN2, which mm -hmm. is the uh, IMDEA Nanosciencia uh, Institute in, in Madrid. And Nazario, uh, his background is in chemistry, in organic chemistry. He's a professor in organi organic chemistry in the Complutense University. But he's uh, one of the persons that has started working on nanoscience uh, in the first years of nanoscience in Spain, uh, in fullerenes and uh, things related to that. And this is what he's go going to talk about today. Uh, his CV, I won't mention it, uh, you can check it in the internet, in the uh, announcement of the seminar today, is really impressive. Uh, he has participated in many projects and in many uh, papers and so on, but he has also uh, uh, devoted a large part of his time to service to the community. He has served in the um, Royal Society of Chemistry in Spain as president, I think, and he was also the president of the Association of uh, Confederation of uh, Scientific Societies in Spain, the COSTE, for five years, I think, in, in the beginning of, of four years. Uh, so his activity there has been uh, uh, very important too. Um, so today he's going to talk about uh, chemistry, organic chemistry, but uh, focused on a particular societal uh, challenge. Uh, this is important for ICN2 because our Severocho project is on societal challenges and the applications to biomedicine is one of the societal challenges that, that we are tackling. So he's going to talk about using fullerenes and organic chemistry to try to uh, combat uh, Ebola. So, Nazario, please go ahead. Thank you very much for this very nice introduction. And uh, it seems to be that uh, I'm the first speaker, as you mentioned right now, on the, the first Spanish speaker, the first chemist speaker, but I have to say that I was also the first, no Spanish, but the first speaker in ISIC as well. So when they celebrated 10 years uh, of ISIC Institute, it was they made a, uh, some information and uh, they had to show the first speaker invited. And it was also my privilege, like today. So thank you very much indeed for this kind invitation. And um, well, uh, today I would like to, to tell you a little bit, this is one of the of the topics we are developing in, in, uh, in our group at Complutense University, but also, as mentioned before, in, at India Nanoscience Institute in Madrid, is quite similar to this institute in terms of our building was created around three years ago. So, so there are many parallelisms. So the idea today is just to strengthen the relationship, the maybe collaboration in future, so to know each other. And uh, you should also visit us and just to look for synergy in, in between our centers. But today I would like to focus this, and uh, of course that is a privilege to also uh, to give this lecture, whose name is Manuel Cardona, because uh, I never knew him personally, but uh, I always uh, hear about him in a very nice way, uh, not only as a scientist, but also as a person. So it's, uh, it's really fantastic, just very, honor for giving this lecture. Today I would like to show you which is carbon nanostructure can do in order to combat or to fight against this uh, virus, which was very popular a couple of years ago. I will give you more details in future. And in my second part, I would like to show you, to introduce you to this unus un uh, uh, unusual molecule. This is a tridecafullerene, 13 fullerene uh, units in the same molecule and however is completely soluble in water. The reason is because there are 120 carbohydrates decorated in the periphery. So in some ways we are mimicking the virus morphology. This is the, the idea. Let me give you just a few words about this great scientist which, uh, who was born in Barcelona but died in, in Stuttgart in Germany. He had according 
the data I could find, he had the nationality, the Spanish nationality, but also the German nationality and also the U.S. nationality. So it's, it's fantastic. And, and uh, well, he died, passed away just two years ago. But believe me that I hear about him as one of the great, uh, the greatest uh, scientists in, in Spain. So it's, it's a really great honor to, to participate in these lectures. Well, uh, before I introduce you to the topic for today, uh, I would like to show you very briefly uh, what we are following in, in our group at Complutense University on, on fullerene, specifically fullerene. But we have, my very last slide would be to show you in one slide uh, different topics we are engaged as well on, on graphene. But let me tell you, uh, related with fullerene and taking advantage of the electron accepting ability of this molecule, we have carried out many uh, uh, works, uh, projects devoted to the uh, covalent or supramolecular interaction with a variety of electron donor molecules. Light irradiation promotes the electron transfer from the donor to the acceptor, giving rise to the charge separated state or radical ion pair. This is uh, therefore mimicking the photosynthetic process. But if you are interested in more uh, applied uh, systems like organic photovoltaics, then you have to prepare a totally different kind of fullerenes, simpler to prepare, uh, easy to synthesize, and obtain in, in multigram amounts. And we have developed a great variety of works as well, in collaboration, of course, with many physicists able to prepare devices. And uh, well, in collaboration with uh, physicists from uh, India nanoscience, mostly India nanoscience, we have decorated the the, the surface of uh, a variety of uh, solid materials, namely metals, but more recently as well with uh, graphene, with a variety of molecules, including fullerenes. Also in the so-called organic electronics, fullerenes have been, in this case, we use, we synthesize these molecules where the fullerene is acting as an anchoring group for interacting with the SDM tip. The reason is because you are able to see the fullerene in contrast to other uh, alligators like uh, uh, thiols or whatever. But in this case, you can see the fullerene and therefore you can uh, put the tip on the fullerene and, and we were able to measure the conductance the, of, of a variety of pi conjugated systems. Also fundamental studies. We have developed the, the, the first uh, enantiomerically pure synthesis of fullerene. So we are able to obtain chiral fullerenes at will for the first time, and using the most powerful tool in organic chemistry, which is asymmetric catalysis. So this is, this we published a, a first paper in 2009, and since then a variety of papers uh, uh, opening a totally new field, which is the synthesis of chiral fullerene salt with, with E values always surpassing 90%. Uh, also, uh, taking advantage of this convex surface of fullerene, we have been, uh, well, carry out an extensive work on the so-called so concave convex supramolecular interaction, because we consider that this could be a, a, a new, or not new, but a, a singular uh, supramolecular interaction by, by itself. So it's uh, this kind of uh, pi pi interactions, mostly pi pi interactions, are also essential. And eventually, we have used uh, bio-inspired molecules, peptides, also more recently proteins, just to order electroactive molecules, as you can see here in some cases, extended GTF or whatever. Uh, and today I would like to focus in, in the biomedical application. We have been also engaged. What I will in, uh, show you today, we started uh, almost eight years ago to work on this topic. But, uh, well, I will show you that uh, this kind of exakis adducts of fullerenes can compete favorably against the Ebola virus for the uh, cellular receptors, mostly this is sign, these are, are lectins. And this is the idea to show you today uh, how these fullerene derivatives can be, can inhibit inf efficiently the, the virus infection. So let's start by the beginning. Just yes, this is the presentation for today. Very briefly, the introduction of uh, if fullerenes are the, the materials of choice for, for, for biomedical applications or not. And then it is essential to the molecules we, we prepare can mimic in some way the viruses with uh, tremendous differences in, in size, for instance, is around one order of magnitude. But uh, for a better understanding, it is important to un uh, well, understand 
the carbohydrate protein interaction very briefly as well. Probably here there are in the audience some people who know knows pretty well this interaction, but it's essential for, for understanding. Then I will show you the, the synthesis of these molecules of a, extreme beauty, the molecules, and especially symmetry. I will show you how symmetry could be used even for, for students at the undergraduate level. And then the, another kind of uh, carbon nanostructures, maybe carbon nanohorns as multivalent scaffolds. That would be the idea. So let's go uh, to the beginning. Well, this is, if you know, fullerene is uh, soluble in some organic solvents. Uh, this is uh, C60 in toluene, for instance, you, you get the, the typical magenta color. But if you go to water, uh, then the fullerene, the solubility is around 10 to minus 11 that milligrams per milliliter. That means that uh, essentially fullerene is insoluble in water. So, well, it's not the best starting for a molecule just uh, to be used for biomedical applications. And in addition, it's toxic, as, as I will show you uh, right now. But uh, if you have a look to the molecule, immediately you realize that there are many differences with other molecules typically used for <laughs> medical applications. Well, the first one is, uh, well, we can say some disadvantages, no soluble in water and no functional groups. Of course, it, excluding the, the, the presence of the 30 uh, double bonds. But, uh, well, we could uh, take this into consideration as a something favorable, as a kind of advantages to say that, well, this is a globular structure, it's a 3D molecule in, in some way, and the size is remarkable, it's around one nanometer diameter. So we could take this advantage and together with other advantages, for instance, a spherid and rigid shape is, could be used as antioxidant. It's a very good radical scavenger. Hydrophobicity is an interesting property to be used as well. And then it is known that fullerene exhibit interesting photochemical properties. So this is in favor, but in contrast, <coughs> perhaps the most uh, difficult is this one. Uh, in, in contact with water, they form these kind of colloidal aggregates, which are toxic. Had been studied in, in some biological systems, some fishes, and uh, zebra fish, for instance. And uh, another disadvantage is that uh, these studies in vivo could also predict a potential effect, negative effect, also in humans. But this is the state of the art. However, what can we do as a chemist? Just simply to uh, just to change the properties is then let's modify the solubility and perhaps also the properties. How can we modify the solubility by chemical modification? Because as chemists, we, we try to carry out the chemical functionalization of the, this molecule by different manners. And well, by using this, this strategy, fullerene has been used for photodynamic therapy. I will not go into details unless you want to ask me later on, but uh, uh, neuroprotection and antioxidants against the famous ROS, Okay, uh, fullerenes for magnetic resonance image as uh, drug delivery, also as antibiotics at the very beginning, but with a different strategy to that I will show you today. Okay, uh, this was eventually was not so not was not very successful. This was in mid 90s, something like that, and eventually anti-cancer and immunologic, immunological properties as well. Well, um, let's go to the to the carbohydrate uh, protein interactions. And uh, here you can see this is a mammalian cell. And most of these cells are densely decorated by, uh, by carbohydrates. The, the name of this coat is, is glycocalyx. Initially, it was, well, the composition is glycolipids, uh, glycoconjugates, glycoproteins. But uh, in principle, it was all, always considered that the glycocalyx has uh, a merely a protective function. But today it is very well known that there are many functions for the glycocalyx and all of them have something in common. Uh, is, uh, they allow the interaction, they are the responsible for the social beh behavior. That means that they interact with other cells or any other pa pathogens or whatever. But most of these interactions are typically uh, conducted through carbohydrate protein interactions. And there are some similarities for all these interactions. The first one is that this interaction is highly selective. That means, as I will show you today, that when you are using manosis, it's highly efficient. But if we use galactosis, the efficiency is zero. 
So just by modifying the, the configuration of two uh, carbon atoms, you are able to completely modify, be very efficient or not uh, active at all. Uh, so a highly selective process. It's also calcium, well, calcium dependent, metal divalent uh, uh, cations uh, or decations dependent, mostly ca calcium, but also uh, manganesium has been uh, used to interact with the proteins. It is also remarkable the low affinity of this interaction, typically in the millimolar region. So what, what can we do, Mother Nature do, in order to overcome this very weak interaction, to use the, the so-called multivalent interaction? What is multivalency? Let me show you very briefly. If you are interested in this topic, this is a beautiful review. And, um, well, uh, interaction, the, the, you can see here, this, this is very well known, the Bardane fruits and Velcro. This is a natural word, this is artificial. But uh, if you have a dog and you go with the dog uh, just uh, uh, walking on the field or, or in the park, then when you go home, you realize what is the efficiency of multivalency, okay? Because this uh, fruit, you have to remove it when possible, otherwise you have to cut it. Because while well, one, one of these uh, legs is very weak, but all together by using multivalency, it's not just multiply, it's just exponential. And the same happened with Velcro. Velcro you have to separate both parts just in the right way. Otherwise, it's impossible to do it in this way. So this is the multivalency effect. And this is also happening in the, in the natural world because uh, you have here, the, the, this is the idea that when you have a multivalency, this is a an, an monovalent inhibitor, but the efficiency, as I will show you today, is that when you have these inhibitors all together, one, one leg is a stick, the others are immediately a stick, and the efficiency is much, much higher. I will show you today this example. And there are many cases in the, in the real world, in the natural world, fertilization, metastasis, embryogenesis, where, where you find this multivalency process in between carbohydrates and proteins. And therefore, the, the idea would be just to develop new tools to, to understand, but also to intervene in this effect, which are all of them are based in this multivalent presentation of carbohydrates. Well, this is not new. So what I want to, what I would like to show you today is not new, and there are many precedents in literature. You can see here that the peptides and proteins have been used to be highly decorated with carbohydrates, but also polymers of different nature, cyclodestrins, calixarins, even liposomes, okay, going to the supramolecular world but also which are closer to our systems, maybe <coughs> these two, the, the glycodendrimers and also glyconanoparticles. But I have to say that many important differences. For instance, when you are uh, using glyconanoparticles, first of all, you are using typically metals, and metals could have some, uh, are not so biocompatible as carbon, as I will uh, mention today. Then this interaction is not fixed, they is, uh, uh, are moving around, and uh, you don't have any control on the number of carbohydrates you are introducing in the nanoparticle. In contrast, what I would like to show you today is these two molecules uh, in which you have uh, this symmetrical fullerene has been decorated. This is an exakis adult, so six double bonds located in an octahedral position have been saturated by using this uh, cyclopropanation reaction, which is in the, in the fullerene world, is, is known as the Bingel or bingel hirsch reaction. It's a cyclopropanation reaction. And then taking advantage also of click chemistry because of the efficiency, it is possible to synthesize the symmetric, but also what is interesting, this asymmetric molecule in which, in addition to, to these uh, five malonates, you have another one with a different reactive group. This is very important because this is uh, very efficient for further chemical functionalization. And we will use both systems for, for my presentation today. In addition, you have a central core, which is carbon. Carbon, which is not so electro, uh, accept, electron accepting molecule because the saturation of the double bonds makes that the molecule is not uh, so, uh, the, the, uh, uh, well, it's, uh, the electron affinity of the molecule has been reduced significantly. So what you have mostly is a, is a central core whose composition is carbon, which is quite biocompatible. 
This is interesting. In addition, you have a control on the number of carbohydrates and also in the position because these are uh, in a globular structure. And this, this is what makes the difference. We have a control on the, on the, sh on the shape and also the size according to the length of this. Uh, uh. Sorry, do you still have some double bonds there which are not uh, broken? So can you put more, more groups there? No, the, uh, the maximum has been, uh, has been known and characterized the exact is adult. There are one paper or two in which they claim that they were able to obtain the epta cycloadult and even the octa, but they are unstable and they immediately uh, decompose because they are, in this case, they are in an octahedral position and they are uh, uh, localized in, uh, they are a space in, 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 in an spherical manner. And uh, exaduts can be obtained very easily, stable materials. Uh, Eptaduct uh, are not, uh, and, and it's very difficult to introduce the number seven because of the space. Um, so what I like to show you today is to validate fullerenes as a, a scaffold, a highly versatile scaffold uh, for the multivalent presentation of carbohydrates. And for that, we use this reaction. So what we need is the fullerene decorated with alkynes and the sugar with acido groups. Of course, the other way around could be also work. Okay? We use click chemistry. And by using click chemistry and looking for the best reaction conditions, we were able to obtain a very robust spacer because this is an aromatic system and these are uh, the optimized conditions. So we have used different conditions but these are eventually uh, are the best one for our purposes. And uh, well, let's go. Uh, the reaction is quite simple. This is a very well known uh, chemical reaction in fullerene chemistry. This is a cyclopropanation reaction. So see this double bond is saturated and now a new cyclopropane is formed. This is a symmetric malonate, has been easily synthesized, and these are the conditions we use. And also to remark to you that this is three days reacting. The reaction is finished before, but just for the sake of obtaining the exa case adduct, we maintain the reaction. But uh, for sure that if we optimize, maybe 24 hours could be completed. And, uh, and uh, well, Actually, the molecule is not planar, it is, it is represented here. The molecule is more similar to this one. So we have the malonate, okay, in the polar positions, and in the equatorial position we have four, two of them in a vertical arrangement and, and the other two in an horizontal one. So this is the, the real molecule, in principle, how the, this molecule is. So let me show you, let me go to, to uh, spectroscopy, because this molecule is relatively simple. But it's simple because of the symmetry. Here there are 84 hydrogen atoms, and they they are, appear only four signals. Okay, because of the symmetry. Let's go to the carbon 13. Carbon 13. This could be a very good example for undergraduate students, because here you have, I don't know, it's uh, 120 carbon atoms, and however, look at the signals. Okay again because of the octahedral symmetry. I want to bring your attention to these two signals, which are the only two sp2 carbons belonging to the, to the C60 central core. Okay, and I will use these signals not only as a, uh, as a proof of the structure, but also as a criteria of, of purity. It's a purity criteria because this is the exakisadut. If for any reasons the penta keys uh, the pentakis aduct or tetra would be present, the loss of the symmetry at the many isomers would result in a mass here. So this is a, a seven, 700 megahertz uh, uh, apparatus, and that means that these signals can be used as a purity criteria, okay? Well, in addition, as expected, the signal in the FTIR, as expected, and the mass spect also reveal. We uh, pay attention to this because to get the mass spectra with the carbohydrates is quite, quite difficult because of the extensive decomposition of these materials. So next step would be we have the central core, so let's go to the click chemistry reaction. It's the second reaction I will show you today. Very efficient reaction because, uh, well, we use different acido carbohydrates. These were prepared in Sevilla by Javier Rojo. And you can see here, this is the mannose, the alpha D mannose. And uh, this is the beta L fructose. Both are active 
against the Ebola virus. But just for the sake of comparison, we use also the beta D galactose. <coughs> Only this carbon atom, carbon 2 and carbon 4, have the stereochemistry which is different to the mannose. But one is efficient and the other one is completely inefficient. Okay? Of course, uh, the dimer and also the trimer were prepared. And the trimer, we can also modify the length of the chain. Of the chain. And this is interesting in order to have a control on the size and shape of the, of the final molecule. Look at this. With the only exception of this one, which was the protected <laughs> molecule, probably, probably not optimized. I want to, to, to bring your attention that these are 12 reactions in one pot. If the yield is 90% or 80% or even 75, 80%, that means that each step is practically quantitative. If you multiply 99 by 99 12 times, probably you will get around 90, 80%. So these are mostly quantitative process. So click chemistry is a very, very efficient reaction. In addition, we have all that the society is demanding to our community, which is how to get rather complex molecules in a very few steps with a high, tremendous yields, and in addition, atom economy. We are fulfilling all these requirements, okay? So this is fantastic. We have our first molecule. And uh, again, look at this. The molecule now is considerably much more complex. But again, the carbon-13 is acting as a, 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 a criteria for the purity of the molecule. And again, the two expected molecules, these are the only two carbon atoms remains in the central core of the fullerene. Okay? All the signals have been also assigned for, the, for this uh, compound. Just to, to, to recall you that, uh, well, this is the exact is adult, and uh, these are the typical features I mentioned before. But if you have just a mono adult, which is a symmetrical one, like this one, you can see here that in this region belonging to the central core of the fullerene, you have 15 sp2 carbon. Despite that this molecule has two, two planes of symmetry, but the symmetry is considerably lower than in the exact is adult. And that is the reason because this is so si simple. Actually, it's very simple. If you go, of course, to the pristine C60, only one signal at around 143 ppm is observed. We have also um, carried out some uh, calorimetric studies, uh, isothermal titration calorimetry uh, in our equi equipment, and we uh, decided to evaluate these two molecules having 12 manoses and 24, just by using the, dim the, the dimer. So I will not go very much into detail, but pay attention to this. When we have only one mannose, only one carbohydrate, the binding constant resulted to be around 10 to 4. When you have this molecule having 12 mannoses, the binding constant is not this value multiplied by 12. It's exponentially larger. This is the multivalent effect, OK? Well, when we went to 24, we were really excited because it should be much better. But when we go here, 137.5. So something wrong here. It was completely unexpected. Why if we increase the number of manoses, the, the efficiency for interaction with the lectin is, is considerably lower? Well, we assume the following. This were our conclusion. For 12, is a very good multivalent ligand and validates fullerenes for the as a very efficient platform for the presentation, multi, multivalent presentation of carbohydrates. When we go to the 24, well, maybe the reason for that is the possible steric conjection. So carbohydrates are very close one to each other, and they prevent in some way the interaction with the protein. So in order to clarify, to unveil this, uh, what we carry out was the synthesis of this molecule having, having 36 carbohydrates, now with the trimer, okay? Furthermore, we decided to modify the length of the spacer connecting the carbohydrate to the central core, and we carry out the synthesis of this new molecule as well with 36 carbohydrates, but now with a larger spacer. And with these systems, we carry out some biological studies in collaboration with Rafael Delgado in Hospital 12 de Octubre de Madrid. Well, let's go to this one. First, I want to mention that when you are using galactose, the same molecule with galactose, with 12 in this case, it was in green. So the efficiency was simply zero, no, no activity at all, okay, with the galactose. When you go to mannose, this is the, for 12 is the, our molecule, which resulted to be 
relatively good efficiency because the half maximum uh, inhibitory concentration, the IC50, resulted to be two micromolar, micromolar. So we are in the, in the micromolar region. And uh, well, interesting, when we go to 36, but, but this one, 36, uh, um, this value here, but having a short spacer, a short linker, then maybe because of the congestion of the molecules, the efficiency is uh, over one order of magnitude poorer. So the, the efficiency was lower, so this was not very good. But when we go to the same molecule, 36 manosis, but with a larger spacer, which is this one in red, the efficiency resulted to be at the sub-micromolar sub uh, concentration. So this was very good indeed. Don't forget this value, which is 0.3 micromolar. This is for this molecule, which was a molecule very easy to synthesize. Okay. So let's go to how is the, this, these assays are carried out. Well, this is uh, just a, a very naive way to show you how is in the presence of no inhibitor. So this is the, the cells that uh, Rafael Delgado used in, 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 in 12 de Octubre in Madrid are Jurka cells. These are T lymphocytes. These uh, cells do not express the DC sign as a, as a receptor. So this molecule has been modified in order to express this receptor. So that means that the lymphocyte, T lymphocytes, when they are used uh, without uh, the natural uh, uh, cells, they cannot be infected by the, by the um, Ebola virus. So this is uh, the conclusion is that the, if the cell is infected, the only possibility is to go through the DC sign receptor. Okay, this is interesting. So in the presence of the virus, what we observe is that the viruses approach to the cell, to the receptors. This is the only way to do it, to go into the cell. The next step would be that through this receptor, the, here is the, in, the carbohydrate of the virus interacting with the proteins of the receptors. They are able to go into the cell and you have the infected cell how we are able to determine how great or how is the infection? Well, because this infection provokes the express the uh, luciferase and luciferase breaks the luciferin and just in the spectrophotometer it is possible to measure the light, the emitted light. So in the presence of our inhibitor, in the presence of our molecule, now are competing not only the virus but also our molecule by the receptors. Now that means that the infection is, should be lower and because of that the luciferin has been uh, through the luciferase, the light express is significantly lower. So just with the spectrophotometer it is possible to measure the infection of the cells. Okay? Uh, these are the conclusions for this part of my presentation. So we validate that these adults are not toxic at the, at the concentration we are using and uh, are interesting scaffolds for the multivalent presentation of carbohydrates. In addition, they are able to inhibit at a very good level at the sub-micromolar concentration the infection of this virus. So they are competing by the receptor. This is like uh, if uh, this is the cell and, and the receptor, the, the virus want to go into the, this room, but our key is in the, in the lock. So that would be a little bit the idea. Let me tell you a couple of slides about, about the Ebola virus because it's Im important to realize what is the, the, uh, the, vi the virus and also the, the illness and, and the people dead because of the virus. Well, th this virus was reported for the first time in 1976. I will show you uh, just now. But there are still many things. Let me go to these uh, particular questions here. When you observe the presence of question marks, the, the, the answer is that it's almost unknown. Eh? There is almost no information and it's basically unknown. So this, what is known is that this virus is highly lethal and uh, in between 60, 80, sometimes 90% of the infected people die. First point. Second point is that if you want to handle the, the original virus, the pristine virus, the real virus, you have to use Biological Security Labs number four. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is one in Hamburg in Germany. There is another one in France, I think Toulouse or Marseille. Uh, 
and, and in Spain, to the best of my knowledge, no uh, P4 uh, exists so far. So we are in, in now in collaboration with people from Humboldt in order to carry out some experiments with the real virus. But what about the, the cytotoxicity, basically unknown? The natural reservoir, this is a very important point, I, I, I feel, because uh, we realized that the virus was active in 2014, in the last outbreak of this virus, and, and then suddenly someone appeared on the TV news to tell us the virus is gone, it's finished, 2015. It's gone where? Where are the virus? Because the, we are expecting for the next outbreak, the next infection of the virus. But where are living the, these viruses? It's really difficult to, to know and to answer this question. Actually, there is no answer. People consider that they, the viruses are living in some caves, maybe, and the bats, mostly fruit bat, bats, are responsible for the dissemination. But, but just if you want to study this and you take 1,000 of these bats, still so far today, it has been never found a, a, a live virus in these bats. So the only thing you can find is some uh, um, maybe DNA or RNA uh, fragments. And if you take 1,000 of these animals, just to put all together, you have tiny amounts of, of, of a DNA material. So it is really very difficult. Some people consider that it's not the bat, but there is maybe a spider or maybe um, a tick uh, or whatever, these uh, which are able to propagate. But the question is, where is the virus right now? Nobody knows. Uh, some people exploring some caves in Africa, they uh, had uh, suffered damage in the in, uh, heart and, and these people died. Was one people investigating from Holland, I think was. So, but th this is interesting, which is the cellular receptor is unknown, uh, basically unknown as well. And uh, that is the reason because if we are able to determine, to de sorry, to determine that the DC sign could be one of the important uh, uh, receptors for the entrance of the virus to the cell, that would be a very, very important achievement. Um, and this could be done in the next few months in, in collaboration with Hamburgo. As Hamburg, as I mentioned. So, and the lack of medicaments. This should be updated because last July there was a vaccine from people from Canada. And this is interesting. Actually, they tried the vaccine with uh, 4,000 people in Africa. In Spain, 40 people. They were uh, uh, volunteers. And one of them was our favorite doctor in, in 12 <laughs> de octubre. He put uh, as, a, as a patient uh, volunteer to take the, the vaccine. And um, um, well, a vaccine is not uh, is uh, is not like uh, to 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 fight against the virus. It's, it's a different stage. So uh, still, the is open for for. But it seems to be that this vaccine could be uh, interesting. But uh, vaccines are not 100% sure, and the people infected should be treated. So this still validate our approach to this topic. This is a, a, a before lab. There's the conditions in which you have to be handled. And uh, well, let me show you very briefly without going this, this, I recommend to go to internet, there are a lot of information. But these are the outbreaks, uh, the virus infection when it started in 76. But then not many people, look at this is uh, uh, 1,000, over 1,000 people infected. Not many really in the, in the people when appear till two years ago. That it's, this is around 28,000 people. And um, well, the people who die in this, in this outbreak was around 11,000 people in Africa. Not many, considering that, that there are many people in Africa, it's not the same that the one nurse in Madrid. The situation was completely different, okay? Uh, it, it is not so important, these people in Africa. But one person in Madrid is critical. Everybody was, the alarm was, uh, this is, I'm sorry to say, to talk in this way, but this is the real situation. So according to our virologist, he said, the number of nurses who died in this outbreak were, were around 800. Considering this number of uh, sanitary people, <coughs> it is considered that the number of people infected should be in between two or three times larger than it was uh, come out. 
So maybe this is not uh, at this level, but maybe multiplied by two or, or by three. Okay, who knows? Okay, so this is just to, to give you some additional information. Let's go to the second part of the presentation, which is, this is, uh, the paper was published here in January this year, but uh, it is interesting, um, this was appeared in the news and views of the same journal, and this is the way in which they present it. So the idea was now, this molecule, I introduced you to, to this molecule before, so we were able to prepare this exactis adult. So now the, the challenge should be just to carry out this new molecule having an acido group and to carry out click chemistry again. So this would give us this new molecule. We have to look for the name, 3 decafluorine, 13 fullerenes in the same molecule, totally soluble in water. So let's go to the challenge of synthesizing this molecule. Was not so difficult because the only thing we did was to prepare an asymmetric malonate, the exa, uh, sorry, the six bromo exyl ethyl malonate. It was carried out under the same standard uh, Binger Hiss cyclopropanation reaction, and we stopped the reaction in the mono adult. Um, then, reaction with the symmetric malonate, it is possible to obtain this molecule, okay, and eventually to carry out the click chemistry reaction under standard conditions. Uh, this molecule, I have to say that uh, we carry out the reaction in this condition, in this solvent, the methyl sulfoxide, and then the, the molecule is easily isolated by adding ethyl acetate, the molecule precipitate, and you get your molecule very nicely. So it is quite interesting. And we prepare it for mannose as the active molecule and galactose, totally inactive, just for the sake of comparison. Next step is to transform the bromo derivative into the acido derivative. Uh, for both cases is uh, very high yield as well. And uh, with this, what we have achieved is just, uh, well, this new molecule, which is a new building block, new position for further chemical functionalization. We have carried out this synthesis without protecting groups, minimization of chromatographic, highly expensive and time consuming HPLC. So this is, we, has been minimized and we are able to obtain these molecules in multigram amounts. Let me go back again to this, uh, well, uh, carbon-13 as expected, just to prove the purity of the molecule. This is sp2 as expected for the exakis adult, okay? Well, in addition, of course, the acido group in this, it is observed by FTIR, okay? And also the mass spec could be figured out around here. Mass spec is not the, the best technique because when you introduce uh, carbohydrates, there is extensive decomposition. So, so and we validate the, the interest of this molecule because simply by, by efficient click chemistry, it is possible to introduce a uh, fluorescence group. Uh, if you put fullerene, then this fullerene is, is, is has, has a very good, a very high electron affinity, and that means that it is possible by light irradiation to, to, to produce a singlet oxygen. Well, uh, biological traces can be introduced like this with biotin, or if you use maliamide, then you have introduced a variety of uh, epitopes, different glycosylated epitopes. But let's go back to our molecule, to our target molecule, which was <coughs> this one. Uh, well, this is the, uh, let me tell you that in this paper, Nature Chemistry paper, appear uh, a, a group, uh, a French group, which are a, a very good colleague, which is Jean-Francois Nierengarten, is a good friend, and we realized that we were working <laughs> in very similar molecules. Actually, our approach uh, was a central core with the um, uh, alkynes, and then reaction with the uh, carbohydrate endowed with, with the acido group. However, they were carrying out this reaction, which is uh, the, the, the other way around. So they decided to introduce the acido groups in the central fullerene core. Uh, well, it, was, uh, uh, it is possible to handle this material without any problem, but uh, our first thought was that to have so many acido groups could be a little bit risky. So we decided to follow a different strategy, but we got similar molecules. So we decided to stop, to wait for, for uh, this, uh, the molecule they prepare by following this strategy and, uh, and to carry out some measurements in, in Madrid for the Ebola virus infection. So, and we decided to make a, a joint paper in collaboration. I always mention that I prefer to have a very good friend rather than a very good paper. 
okay and this is and since then is, is uh, science is made for enjoying particularly with friends okay so it was a very nice and very successful paper here you can take uh, you can consider also to modify the length of the spacer and let's go to the final goal of uh, which was the, this target molecule in this to carry out this reaction we have to make to carry out the click chemistry so there are 12 uh, click reactions at the same time molecule decorated with 120 carbohydrates probably this is considered the fastest and dramatic growing reported in literature so let me know if in one, only one generation uh, it is possible to introduce 120 uh, systems so unless you tell me uh, other thing or different way uh, we consider this may be the, the fastest uh, the numeric uh, growing up. And of course, it's a global asymmetry. The molecule is not planar, as it is shown here. Well, uh, how to synthesize this? Now I go a little bit faster because now you understand. We prepare this molecule, reaction with the acido group, and um, now you have the asymmetric uh, fullerene. So we have here this bromo that was transformed into the acido group. Of course, again, with uh, mannose, and galactose, okay, in both cases. The last step was to carry out again the click chemistry in a very efficient manner. Look at here, the last step is around 79-76% uh, efficiency. That means that each single step is almost quantitative, it's around 99% or 98 point something. This is really fantastic. And of course, we have this uh, uh, galact uh, sorry, mannose, galactose and also with uh, different manos with a longer spacer. So this is the molecule. This is uh, uh, Antonio, who is, uh, I will uh, introduce him uh, at the end of my presentation with the, the PhD student. So I said to Antonio, Antonio, uh, you cannot go back home today without showing me the molecule in uh, 3D. Because, uh, you know, the molecule is not planar. So uh, you have to, I don't know, this is a, a cartoon, of course. But you can see here the, the central fluorine having uh, two fluorines in the, in the uh, um, polar positions and in the equatorial, the other malonates. But uh, okay, uh, of course, no acido or no uh, uh, triple bond uh, group present in the FTIR. So when I presented this, uh, Josep uh, Poblet, uh, who is a very good friend and very good theoretician, uh, he told me after my presentation, would you mind if I go to some calculations? Of course, that because of the uh, f uh, conformational flexibility, it's impossible to get a minimum uh, of energy. But perhaps some uh, insights could be uh, uh, bring here to this molecule. And he carried out some theoretical calculation. It's still not finished. But there are interesting uh, findings, uh, theoretical findings. The first one is that, well, look at this molecule. The molecule has over 7,000 atoms over 7,000 atoms. And what is remarkable is that the carbohydrates located in the periphery, they are interacting by hydrogen bonding of different uh, energies, of course, but they are interacting among them. So it's like a kind of coat recovering the molecule, okay? This is interesting and not unexpected because of the so many number, high number of uh, hydroxy groups. So this is interesting and you can recognize here the central uh, fluorine with the uh, octahedral, okay? In the two, in the front, you have these two fluorines in the back and then in the, in the other position. So this is a fantastic molecule. And look at the carbon-13. This is remarkable. Uh, over 7,000 atoms. And you can see here again that the simplicity of the carbon-13 NMR spectroscopy. And again, you observe the two features, the two uh, signals, which validates the purity of this, of this molecule. This is really remarkable. Of course, in a 700 megahertz, uh, here is uh, for the, the, the equipment we use. Of course, that we also use other techniques. Uh, for instance, these are TM images. You observe more or less globular uh, spheres. And uh, in this case, you can see that the diameter is uh, around four, five nanometers, more or less, but in other cases, it's larger. So it could be two or three mole uh, molecules which are associated Again, as expected, because of the hydro uh, uh, hydrogen bond, 
Uh, we also use DLS uh, uh, dynamic like scattering, and we could observe the, the presence of single molecules, but also most of them were associated as well at, at different radius. It's a hydrodynamic radius, 120 and even 200. So, well, this is uh, in some way expected, but this is uh, XPS resulted to be quite interesting because, of course, you observe only the signals corresponding to carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen as expected. We deconvoluted all the signals, and uh, let me show you which is the most remarkable. In the nitrogen, the convolution afforded two uh, curves in a one to two ratio, as expected for the two different kind of nitrogens in the trial salts. okay? And uh, not only the signals appear, but the no signals are also providing very f interesting information because here are 405 electron volts should be the acido group. The acido group is not present here, which also validate that the, all the systems, all the group functional groups have reacted on the purity of the molecule. So let's go to the biological properties. You can see here the 17 C is the most efficient uh, molecule with the longer, is this one with the longer spacer, okay, which is the most efficient. You can see here in green, which is big, which is the galactose. So no efficiency at all as expected in green, okay. In blue, this is the molecule having 120 carbohydrates in a long, uh, sorry, in a shorter uh, spacer, and this is in red with the longer. So if we go to this, are the same molecules, but with different value. This is what I told you, taking in, in, your, in your mind, because this is 0.3 micromolar. This was only one fluorine with 36 manosis. But now, if we go to the, the larger spacer, which is this one, with 120 manosis, look at 0.6 nanomolar. So almost three order of magnitude. So the molecule is considerably larger. The, the is, is a globular sphere is uh, around four or five nanometers diameter, but the efficiency is in the sub nanomolar regime. Just for the sake of comparison, the, the highest value reported in literature was this system was based in, in um, this is a lenticular uh, virus particle in which the number of manoses is 1,620, and however, resulted to be almost 20 times uh, lower in efficiency than our molecule. So having one order of magnitude larger number of uh, manoses. So we claim that this is the most efficient molecule reported so far for inhibiting the Ebola virus infection. Okay, this was uh, really fantastic when it was, it's quite, quite unusual for, maybe it should be more usual in future scientists when, but uh, you know that uh, there is an embargo in the, in the journal and they take care of this. So, but before publishing at five o'clock, it was a bullfighting time, five o'clock, uh, a day at five o'clock, it was over 40 mass media pending, uh, expecting for the, for the news. And if you go into internet, you can find around 150 addresses where you can find information about this. But it was just to prove not only at the national level, but also the TV. We appear in the in the in the in La Sexta, in the in the news at midday and also at night. So in the in the news in the news of the of the TV, and this is quite quite unusual. But the, just a proof to to show that this was important is that this was published in La Verdad de Murcia. If something appears in La Verdad de Murcia, that is important, okay? So this is the concept. These are the people uh, in my group. Uh, Beatriz Ijeska is, is associate professor co-directing uh, together with me this, this uh, uh, research. Uh, Antonio Muñoz was the first PhD working. He was the responsible for the, for the drawing I showed with you before. And uh, Alfonso Sánchez is now a PhD student working on the same topic the first year. Laura Rodríguez, uh, she's working, she made a thesis in France, is expert in materials, and she's the responsible for uh, all these uh, techniques more appropriate for materials than molecular species. Uh, Javier Rojo in Sevilla, he's the expert and very good, good friend in, in, in carbohydrates. Macarena Sánchez made the thesis, and uh, Javier Ramos will present his thesis in, in February uh, on, on, on carbohydrates. Both had been uh, Macarena one year and a half as a postdoc in my group 
And he, before presenting the thesis, has been already nine months in my group. And after February, he will come with us for a, another one year as a postdoc. Rafael Delgado is the expert in virology. If you have uh, some questions on this, I could be also very nice to, to tell you. Uh, um, uh, only to tell you that uh, I mentioned about fullerenes, but let me tell you, it was not um, uh, Stephen. Stephen is around, is over there? Okay. Yeah, it, it was not because our, our previous conversation. It was because I offered the possibility of giving different lectures. One, this could be also our, but let me tell you uh, the, some chemical modification we have made in, in, on graphene. This had been in collaboration with people at Indiana Nanoscience. Probably uh, you, you mentioned that you know this paper. It was, uh, it was uh, uh, graphene, uh, it was grow up on, on a metal surface chemical vapor deposition, and then uh, uh, you can observe that the position of electron, electroactive molecule like TC and Q was responsible for the electron transfer from the metal to graphene and from the graphene to the molecule. The molecule has a charge which, with a spin, and what was remarkable is when we put many of these molecules, the spin was not as expected, but all of them were parallel, and they formed domains, magnetic domains, which is a property that is unusual, is not expected for graphene. So this was very nice paper. And also this is another paper in which we have been in, in with these fullerene fragments, could be considered a kind of controlled nanodots, okay? Uh, and the, the, the geometry is completely different. This is the first uh, uh, example in which this uh, 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 photoinduced electron transfer was uh, a study. These are uh, gold nanoparticles decorated with the uh, extended TTF, and you can see that they prefer be located in between layers. Also, this was a collaboration with physicists. We prepare molecules in which they interact, uh, the fullerene as an anchoring group, as an electrode, just to interact with the graphene as well. Uh, covalent chemistry of graphene we have introduced by different chemical reactions like this, this is more recent, in which we introduce uh, uh, flakes, uh, sorry, yeah, flakes of few layer graphene with the uh, fullerenes can be observed here because in this way you have hybrid, sorry, hybrids of carbon in which there is a very inner surface, a very reactive surface which corresponding to the fluorine. And very recently this year also we reported the first example of a graphene quantum dot enantiomerically pure, I mean chiral graphene quantum dots. So I have to say that uh, similarly, uh, so, sorry, simultaneously it was appear um, um, ACS Nano uh, reporting, uh, we did it with ester group, they did it with uh, amido groups. But basically, it was the same idea to have chirality in these systems. Actually, you can observe that these uh, graphene quantum dots are highly fluorescent as well, so as a proof. So this is the group, OK? Everybody, when you show a picture, like to count the number of people. But this is C60, so all, all these faces uh, with, uh, with pictures, around 30, OK? And uh, of course, uh, my acknowledge to not only the European uh, with this uh, ERC uh, advanced grant. I have to say that from my group, another people who is now working independently, Emilio Perez, working at Indiana Nanoscience, he also got a starting grant. So it's quite unusual from the same group to get a starting and an advanced grant. So this is, I'm very proud of this. And also, of course, the community of Madrid are supporting us, uh, particularly related with uh, photovoltaics and uh, also the, the, the government of Spain uh, for the uh, scales money they provide. <laughs> okay, no, but I have to say, at least we have, uh, hopefully, who knows about the future. <laughs> okay, and uh, just to mention that uh, as, um, uh, almost two years ago, I was appointed as the editor-in-chief for uh, a Materia Chemistry A, B, and C, and this is uh, the current factor, impact factor, which is over eight and around five in, in the other one. So it's a, it's a, it could be a very good choice for, for, for sending you some of your, of your papers. So, and uh, I would like to thank you to all of you for your, for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for this impressive and inspiring talk. So, uh, any questions or comments? I'm sure there will be plenty. Pedro? Okay, I will begin. Thank you.
Thank you very much. It's really very, very nice to see s such uh, great work. And uh, I was wondering about uh, relative sizes and cooperativity, um, especially uh, concerning the size of uh, uh, the, the single uh, fullerene, but also the size of the 13th one. Uh, let's say that uh, your molecular weight uh, is multiplied, is one order of magnitude larger, but the activity is three orders of magnitude better. So I was wondering, uh, concerning the size of the virus, you pointed out from the beginning, the yeah. single fullerene is much smaller, even mm -hmm. the 13th is much smaller. I wonder about pos possible cooperative uh, effects between different molecules uh, to bound yeah. Uh, to be bound to the... Yeah, that is... Uh, that? Well, first of all, I have to say that is much more what is unknown for us than the certainties we have. So our knowledge on this is uh, still relatively scarce. Uh, I, I mean that uh, we know that these molecules tend to associate, to aggregate. However, the experiments carried out on these uh, Jurka cells by the biologist, by Rafael, uh, he had no problem at all for carrying out the experiments the protocol for the experiment. So aggregations, it seems to be no, no problem for determining the, the biological activity of these molecules. I don't know if I have it here. Uh, uh, no, no, I don't have it here, sorry. Uh, okay, uh, um, we carry out some diffusion experiments with NMR spectroscopy. I didn't show you, uh, but this is interesting in terms of efficiency how the role uh, played by, by the length, I mean, how separated are the, the functional group, the carbohydrates, and how flexible are these legs? Because uh, when you go from, uh, we carry out this study with the C12, 12 manoses, C60, 12, and C60, 36, and uh, with a longer spacer. And uh, we realized in this study by NMR, by diffusion NMR, that uh, it was come out in, in OVC, um, that flexibility and also diffusion time. So the, the larger molecule is moving much more slowly. And this uh, slowly mo movement can have an impact on the uh, multivalent effect. I mean, you have more time to just to put the first leg and to put the second one that the molecule is, is, dif is the diffusion in the molecule is much uh, faster. So, and also flexibility play a role. You have to consider that, uh, as I showed you before, the idea is to put one leg and then you also have to think that this leg is not forever. This is a dynamic equilibrium as well. So it is like the molecules must be uh, flexible enough and, uh, and the time enough for interacting with the receptor. So this is a... It, uh, one more question, if I may, uh, not chemical, but also a curiosity about the uh, last outburst of uh, Ebola, uh, the most deadly. Uh, the reason for that, was it a, 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 a let's say, mutation of the virus, especially uh, dangerous or was it some social, different social behavior? Yeah, I would say that it's not completely known. Uh, I have to say that one of the, of the best information I got was in, a, in a, it was uh, published uh, last year in July. I was in London um, and I saw in the National Geographics, uh, it was uh, an article devoted to Ebola. And it was fantastic because there are a lot of information there. And then I got the same paper published in Spain three months later. So if someone is interested, uh, National Geographic, uh, the Spanish version should be around September or October last year. And it was fantastic uh, article report. Uh, many of the questions were taken from this article. and. Um, the social behavior could be because uh, there are some uh, in, in one region or the other, the way in which they handle the people uh, uh, dead or, or in, in many cases, 
these people are hunters and and they they are handling this this meat and the way in which they use it uh, has a, a profound effect on the on the on the um, mortality of the of the of the virus but uh, basically uh, it's quite quite unknown many of these questions and the reason is because as i mentioned uh, an outbreak in in africa where one or two thousand people is infected who cares and uh, you know and uh, then if you think in terms of economy or, or a company pharmaceutical company there are not so many cases. Maybe you pr prepare a compound and then in the next 10 years there is no outbreaks. And what do you do? And then, you know, and so it's, the situation is really, uh, really bad in, in, many, in many aspects. Thank you again. Um, I'm also not a chemist, so I, it's going to be also more general. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, this approach of in inhibition uh, protocol in order to, to fight a virus, um, how is it to translate to the clinic, to the human? Because uh, I mean, you're not fighting the virus, you're just preventing uh, the spreading of the virus. And, uh, well, it's very systemic, so you have to probably to have a very high dose uh, and I don't know if this is a, I mean, it's a very good case for research on a cell culture, but how can you translate this really to a... Well, uh, this year I was <coughs> making this presentation in an institute which was focused on biomedical applications and someone asking me, do you know how many viruses are acting in an infection in the body? And I said, I don't know the number of viruses, but after the infinite, the largest number I know is the Avogadro's number, which is 6.0, 10 to 23. So do you know how many molecules, I asked him, of paracetamol, when you take a paracetamol, how many molecules you put in your body? Is around a number, assuming 300, the molecular weight 300, the number of molecules should be something like a number followed with by 20 or 21 zeros. I don't know the number of viruses, but it's considerably smaller than this. So what I mean... <laughs> the molar concentration of viruses, yes? That's yeah. The so, and then, yeah, when, when, the, <laughs> when Rafael was doing the experiment, uh, it is interesting to see that the, the first thing he do is that he put the molecule first and then insert the, 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 the material in, in a solution with the virus, artificial virus. That is, uh, the artificial virus means that uh, it has, it expressed the, 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 the um, carbohydrates to interact with the receptor, with the cellular receptor but it is not possible to replicate. So it has been modified the DNA in terms of uh, producing the, the um, molecules to interact with the receptor, but not possible to, to reproduce. And that is because it can be handled in P2. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it was related with the, with the way in which this, uh, and there is a protocol and I, well, immediately you think, yeah, but if you put your molecule, you are playing uh, with advantage. Not necessarily because, uh, and this is the protocol, is uh, internationally established in this manner. Because if you put your molecule and you are uh, preventing, uh, I have to say that the, the virus is not a live uh, organism or unless he's inside the molecule. So outside, sorry, the molecule, the cell. Outside the cell, uh, you have a protein with a DNA a code, and, and that is virus, it's a molecule. But, uh, and it's, it's, let's say, it survives in, in these conditions for hours. And the immuno immunological system also plays a role and try to clean all this material. But when the virus is inside, uh, the, the cell is broken, died, and it's broken, and many new uh, particle virus uh, are spread 
over there. So eventually what happened is that these viruses has to compete with the, with the molecule that has been already put there. And, uh, and this is the way in which, uh, well, it was carried out this, this study following this protocol. And what is remarkable is that, well, below nanomolar concentration. This is really outstanding because, well, these molecules you have to, to, to test how is the, the toxicity at the concentrations we use. They are not toxic at all. But there are many open questions, pharmacokinetics, or many other aspects that are really unknown. So we have now to go to, uh, to start with mice, studies on mice, hopefully in a few weeks in Madrid, and also with the real virus in Hamburg. Uh, at least the, the, the connections and the contacts has already been settled down to establish, and probably we will follow having more information on these systems. Okay. I actually had a couple of questions more uh, related to the chemistry and the physics. So you mentioned these simulations that uh, people from here uh, are doing, uh, quantum chemists, and these simulations are they are already very big. So you mentioned 7,000 atoms. Mm -hmm. I assume that they don't treat uh, the, the solvent, the water, I guess. And yep. the, the properties of the molecule or the structure of the molecule can be completely different in water because then in water you may not be able to form all these hydrogen bonds that you were mentioning. Because yeah, water will, will yeah, okay, but so. that is true. But again, uh, hydrogen bond as supramolecular interaction, you you are dynamic system. Right. So probably you will have interaction with the water for sure, with the water media, but also probably would be hydrogen. I can imagine the the, the periphery of the molecule like uh, with hydrogen a hydroxy group belonging to hydroxy right. groups interacting and an oxygen with the hydrogen water and vice versa, the hydrogen with the oxygen water and so on in a dynamic manner. Yeah. So I would expect something like this. So um, it is true that to carry out this uh, study, when he said, uh, would you mind if I like to carry out this study? He said, up to you. <laughs> <laughs> At your own risk. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you are sure. But uh, I have to, to confess that uh, just to, to determine that there is uh, this kind of uh, uh, shell, you know, of interaction that, of course, could be modified by the effect of the water media, uh, was uh, something in principle. If you think about it, it's not unexpected, but I wouldn't expect this in principle. So, uh, still, uh, they started as a kind of uh, joke or at the beginning, but eventually they have followed it, and and he is doing in a very systematic manner just yeah. to take a part of the molecule to interact in a symmetric manner because they have to repeat in a right. because of the high symmetry because what is remarkable in the molecule is the symmetry so symmetry should play a role right. in this regard so but uh, maybe in future i will we will be able to present some of these findings okay. uh, theoretical findings yeah and the other question is much more uh, chemical i'm, I'm not uh, very much uh, knowledge of, of, of uh, organic chemistry. So in this uh, uh, reaction that you have for the three deca uh, fillerene, you have a first reaction when you have just one functional group, one, one uh, cycle addition, mm -hmm. and then you have the other groups are different. Mm -hmm. how, can, how do you stop the first one f and preclude it from having more than one? <coughs> uh, Here there are no people working on fillerene chemistry? No. Okay, because then it's, uh, this is a uh, expected question in some way because, well, how do you stop in the, right. the monoadult? Yeah. yeah, this is, uh, in fullerene chemistry, is, um, has been extensively studied and it's so simple that you can follow the reaction by, by chromatography, by TLC, because, uh, well, the only thing you have to do is to, to handle one of the materials, the fullerene, in, a, in, a, in an excess, in a big excess. Then, what is, you will find, uh, if you put a uh, stoichiometry 1 to 10, you can recover your C60. Okay. But uh, what the molecule will, the, the dipole or the carpene or whatever will find is a, a, a fullerene molecule. And to find the same molecule instead of other one, if you are using a, a large excess, you can avoid it. But you cannot prevent eventually that a, mm -hmm. a, a bis adduct could happen. But as soon as the, the first uh, uh, shadow of, of bisadut appear in, the, in your uh, TLC 
uh, you stop the reaction. Okay. So what is true is that uh, the, the, the yield, maybe this is the, the bottleneck for the, for the synthesis because uh, in our case, uh, our, last, our larger uh, yield was around 49, so around 50%. Why? Uh, you cannot follow because when you have the C60 reacting for longer times, C60 tend to aggregate itself. And they form what we call in our lab pelotenos, <laughs> the, uh, put it, uh, and they are not so reactive, okay. you know. So this is maybe the bottleneck, this first reaction. But okay. it is true that you can take your C60 again and to carry out the reaction. Okay. Okay. So but this is very, very much controlled. This m the, okay. the formation of monoadult. Actually, there is no problem to get the pure monoadult and stopping the reaction in time. Thanks, Natalia. Nice talk. Um, I'm going to ask you about uh, defect because you show that uh, how these all these dendrimer-like materials are starting from the fullerene, then you put the sugars, then you link many fullerenes all around. And at the end, the question is: is it seems that it's clear according with the signals that you show the sp2 and mm -hmm. also FTIR, you also show that you have the to see the group or not that you may have some control. But the point is. How, how pure can you get these materials in terms of, because I guess that probably you have a, a, a complete series of, of, pol of other dendrimers where you have defects, where you are missing one, or one fullerene or two fullerenes. Uh, uh, and also, how, how easy is then to purify your final material from the, from the others? Um, <laughs> it's not uh, difficult at all. First, because what we are using is, uh, synthetically speaking, is a conversion approach. So it's a, we have the, the central core and it's in a convergent manner. So we are not growing in a divergent manner. So we are not growing up the, 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 the dendrimeric growing up in this way. That is what it typically is uh, uh, accompanied by, by defects in a, when it's in divergent manner. But when it's a convergent manner, and in this case that uh, the exa kiss adult, they are not uh, prevented because of aesthetic hindrance or whatever. So in our case, it's uh, very easy to get the exakis adult, just saying, and, and once the, the, the cycloaddition, cyclopropanation reaction has been carried out, the, the system is quite stable. They are carbon-carbon bonds, and, uh, and um, it's uh, practically, we can exclude to the, the, the idea of one of these cyclopropanes are broken and, or uh, in, the, in a retro uh, cycloaddition manner. This is, has not been observed. And uh, we have studied very much the retro cycloadditions in fullerenes. Actually, I would say that our group has been one of the groups leader in these uh, studies. And uh, cyclopropanation is quite uh, stable and only unless you put uh, drastic conditions or the presence of metals or whatever, these systems are quite uh, stable. So, and to get the exact is added is quite simple and uh, we can say that uh, in, in this, uh, as a proof, I, I show with this uh, NMR spectra because in case you have a penta adduct or tetra adduct just by defects as you mentioned, because of the loss of the symmetry you should have a tremendous number of, uh, uh, if you would have the one penta adduct with the exakis adduct, it would be a mass, really a mass because of the loss of symmetry. So we can exclude uh, totally the, the presence of uh, impurities in this regard, like the feds. Okay, any more questions? If not, the, we second the speaker again. And, uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.